The Sabres are going to be on the road here taking on the Flyers in the NHL card here. Just a short card, four games, get you covered here. You see some information here rolling in within the last couple of minutes uh, regarding some of the personnel tonight. Connor Clifton, the defenseman for the Sabres, he's at his uh, suspension. Uh, he's out. He's out of this game. He'll be able to return on Philadelphia for that uh hit that he made, that check, whatever it was, uh, Clifton is out. I know they were talking about it, but uh, he has been ruled out of this one. Zach Menson is out for Buffalo as well. Uh, Devin Levy, uh, Devin Levi, he also is out of this game, I do believe. So oh, I think we've seen the goaltending here uh, come in. I would guess with uh, Levy's uh, with Levi's status, that we will indeed get uh, uh, Luokan in here for the Sabres today going up against Connor Hart. Connor Hart is confirmed to be the goalie here today. Uh, I would have to think it's going to be Lukan. And I, I guess if Levi was uh, could be healthy, he would look to play. So maybe that's why we haven't seen the official confirmation here just yet in this one. All right, uh, let's get your comments and maybe some statistics on this one uh, tonight. Here's Ray. He wants to be on the Sabres in this one here. And look at the line right now, currently at Philadelphia. Oh, minus a dollar. 10. Uh, if anything, maybe the Sabres are starting to move to a slight favorite. Could that be an indicator here? Um, I'm wondering if that could be an indicator that uh, Lukanen or that uh, Levi could actually end up being the starter in this one. Because uh, one line service is showing that that could indeed be the case today but uh, uh, he was listed as questionable so let's see here flyers need to bounce back uh brent just rates it at four to four we know it won't end four to four but what he probably is saying here he does not have a pick on the side but certainly he does like the total here to go over is what that looks like to me All right, uh, let's see here. I do have my uh, current notes ready finally here. All right, uh, Mike says Flyers will need to bounce back in this one. Look, uh, if anything, for the Flyers to be 4-4 four and four at this point, uh, I'd say that's pretty positive here coming in. I mean, I probably would trust them in this spot. Uh, especially at this price, uh, at a dollar fifteen. Look, like I said, what is it right now? It looks like it's even closer to a pickup. Here, I call up the latest prices offshore and look at a a live book instead of the odd screen just to make sure. But showing the flyers, just maybe the slightest of favorite still. Total six and a half over thirty. Maybe it's come down just a little bit. You know, usually when I see six and a half over 40, I'm already thinking it's ready to go to seven under 25. So uh, I'm not sure on the total, actually. I could see this one maybe being too high. If it got to seven under 20, uh, I'd probably be willing to come in on the under. Here's Ferner. He wants to go a lean on the Sabres here. I don't. I'm taking, I'll just take Philadelphia. Uh, Yeah, all right. Uh, let me take Philadelphia here in this one as my play against Buffalo, not to go against Ferner here necessarily. But uh, Brent says Sabres and over here in this one. But I want to take Philly at home 
uh, right now. Philly actually seven and two on the puck line so far for Philly, but Buffalo six and three on the puck line. So uh, these guys have been doing pretty well, overachieving pretty well. I think Buffalo, I think Philadelphia may be a little bit more profitable than Buffalo so far, but here's Kev on the Sabres. Stars and the Flames in this one uh, tonight. You got uh, red hot Dallas and ice cold Calgary. I'm sorry, Calgary, that this is what's happening at this point. This hasn't been a real comfortable start here. They were just, uh, you know, in that outdoor game, kind of uh, didn't look that great. As Edmonton got the job done, you're taking on your rivals in the big outdoor game. You got uh, humiliated pretty good here. And uh, take a look at the line now. Uh, here, Dallas on the road, $1.35 maybe, six and a half, uh, six under 20. I'm even seeing a five and a half right now, and sharps are all over the under, I would think, in this one. Uh, like I said, I'm already seeing uh, one book currently at five and a half. So I don't know where you guys might be headed here with the stars and the flames looks like Ottinger. Let's take a look at the goalies and make sure. But uh, would feel like we're going to have Ottinger in there and Markstrom. Neither goalie is confirmed at this point, so I can't necessarily sell you on that. But Dallas, I mean, they're just hot right now. If anything, they're maybe a little bit overinflated on some of their tickets with a. Uh, uh, Five and one record. They're just three and four, however, on the puck line. Ray says he'll sprinkle it though. And here comes Ray on the stars. And Mike says they'll probably be a dollar forty by game time here. So maybe we're getting maybe we are getting a little bit of a discount uh here with Dallas at a dollar. Let's see, let's look market wide and see what the prices are, but um, recent change here, $1.30 offshore, $1.30 at the biggest U.S. online book. Mostly $1.35 across the board here right now. So I don't know if there's actually too much value to it, but I'll probably take the stars. Here's Ferner on the stars. I'm just trying to get Calgary back to life. That's all, you guys. Um, they'll find spots. I mean, I guess this isn't it. The St. Louis Blues will take on the Colorado Avalanche NHL action for Wednesday night with Colorado at home. A two dollar two dollar and thirty cent favorite. The total six and a half under at minus one fifteen. Big favorite here for Colorado. Even if they do end up with their uh, backup goaltender in here tonight, he is likely to uh, go. I'm talking about Prosvetov. Here in this one, um, Bennington not confirmed just yet, but for Presvedov, this will be his uh, first start with the Avalanche, and uh, he did make one appearance in uh, a game last week as he came in for Gurdjieff uh, in a game. Presvedov uh, is 4-6-1 and one in his career. Of course, he was with the Coyotes last season. He averaged... Uh, four goals against, pretty much right on, 87% save percentage. And uh, they've been tough right now for the Avalanche. A little bit of a surprise of late. They have not looked good in their last couple of games. Here as they've fallen to 6-2 and two after that red-hot star. Nobody's going to complain too much, but uh, a little bit of a surprise the fact that they've been uh, outscored in the two games, four to nothing at Pittsburgh, four to nothing at Buffalo, when they were scoring all those goals previously: seven against the Islanders, six against the Canes, four against the Blackhawks, and uh, it had been a real hot start, let's just say, for Colorado to start the season. So, but uh, you know, get the backup in there this time, just to. Uh, you know, maybe give Gurdjieff some well-deserved rest. A little college football steam coming in. 
All right, it's this one with the Blues and the Avalanche. Yeah, I'm seeing kind of two-way action pretty much from the Sharps here, but I'll probably lay Colorado minus a goal and a half here in this one back home off of being outscored eight to nothing in the last two games. Mike said it right there. Look, four nothing and four nothing. So stuck on four. And uh, that might be just enough for me. Ferner's looking at the blues on the puck line. I can't do it. I'm going to lay it. I'm going to lay it. Brent says kind of the same thing here. Abs in regulation. I'll take Colorado minus a goal and a half. I haven't done that too many times this season, but I'm going to do it here. And uh, we scored all the other night, taking all those puck lines, puck line dogs, kind of like Ray may be doing here, but. I'm going to lay it with Colorado. I'm going to lay the puck line with Colorado. And finally in the NHL tonight, it's the Arizona Coyotes on the road against the, uh, well, <laughs> I want to say surprising Ducks, but also I want to say surprising Coyotes. This is a nice game to a certain extent, considering where these franchises have been mired over the last couple of, for a long time, forever. But right now, Arizona, they're four and four at this point. Anaheim, they're five and four. So we got matchup teams that are not below 500. That's one way to put it. Now, it does look like most of the uh, money line action here coming in on Arizona. They, you know, they might be pretty public y here today. Maybe we can get your comments on this one while I fiddle around here. All right. Let's just start previewing it a little bit with the Coyotes here, a favorite on the road at $1.30, and uh, the total six and a half. Has there been any movement on that? Um, no, maybe just a tick to the under here with that total, and maybe the move is on the Coyotes just slightly. All right. And uh, I'm probably going to back that as well. I don't know. I've, Arizona is a team that definitely has caught my attention here early in this season. <laughs> they beat Chicago. Remember, I want to say, oh, this is a big matchup of two teams to see which team is more improved, Chicago with their young superstar or uh, the Coyotes. But, no, it's been the Coyotes so far. With a great, They beat them 8-1 in that game. Here's Ray on the Coyotes, but Mike's on the Ducks. Brent just sees this one as a high-scoring game, and, I do too, Brent, quite honestly. I think that's what we will see in this one. There's a lot of goals. So um, Kev Cook is leaning the Ducks. And Ferner worried about this four-game card. So um, I don't know if I need to go much further as far as a breakdown uh, for – with or for you guys is concerned. These teams are playing pretty good. And, um, yeah, let's see. Mike says, how do the Arizona Coyotes favor, uh, you know, uh, as a favorite on the road? Well, the sample size is pretty small, let's just say. <laughs> let's just say, Mike. System play. I'm going to end up just taking the Coyote. Look, they are favored, I think, for a reason. Maybe this is a little higher than I want to pay, so I don't think I can do a premium here, and it may be some volatility. Like I said, I've got this one probably as a high-scoring game, so if we get into the seven-goal range, it's not going to be like it was the other night, eight to one or something. It's going to be because the score is very much what like Brent was saying right there, three to three, four to four type of game. It feels like to me in this one, I'll take the Coyotes. I think they are the team to win the game. And, um, you know, if anything, just maybe a little bit high of a price 
uh, here. I, I like the Ducks, and look, this is the goalie situation, I think. No, both are not confirmed just yet. So, all right, I guess we can't go too much into it with the uh, the goalies if we don't know. But like I said, Luke, Do Luke Dostal might definitely be in there here for the Ducks, and maybe that could be the difference in this one uh, if they don't have – uh, Gibson in there, but Dossel's played quite a bit so far here. Kev says it's going to take a couple years to get those Blackhawks going. I, I, I guess that is right. I am one to believe that sometimes with these young stars, uh, they turn around franchises quickly. Look at what, you know, when we talk about the, the can't miss prospects that have come along and how they've turned, you know, these guys not only turn franchises around, but they go on to win. They go on to win everything, it seems like. So, 